me. Amen. But I ain't what will come to me. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm on my way. Praise the Lord. He's still working on me. Hallelujah. I want to remind you that I've still got some of the copies of Brother Wayne's newsletter and the CD on the strange sounds teaching that he did a few weeks ago after church. If you want one, I done gave a few of them out. But after church, if you want one, by all means. Yes. I have you a copy this morning. Hallelujah. Go with me in the Word of God to Luke the fifth chapter. Luke the fifth chapter. We've been talking about the Word of God. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. My. my goodness, I can't think of nothing better to talk about. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I know people's minds this morning are on football. Yeah. A lot of them. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Some of them didn't go to church because they had to get ready for their Super Bowl party. Right. Some of them went to church. They will this afternoon for their Super Bowl party. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. They'll move out the altar and the podium if they've got an altar. Come on. Amen. Yeah, yeah. If they still have an altar, yeah. Amen. That seems That's to good. have became or the bill a piece of you know furniture we can dismiss right. with or, or dispose with. Come amen. On. In the church of today, because it's yeah. not used very much anymore. Right. Hallelujah. But thank God for the altar. But they'll they'll move it out and they'll put in a big screen TV and they'll have you wear your team colors. Come on. Some pastors preached. Yeah. In the jersey of their favorite team this morning. Right. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. I wouldn't be surprised if the choir didn't dress up like cheerleaders Come and bomb bombs. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how crazy the church is. Amen. That's how crazy the church is. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Pastor in Owensboro not long ago preached from a big bird's nest. Right. Amen. Come on. I got a new word for it. Cuckoo's nest. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. But that's where he preached from. Yes, my, my, that's just it. to draw the crowd. Yeah. And the church will compromise and we'll do whatever it takes. Sometimes it seems like the church will, many of them, right. to try and get somebody inside the doors. Come Amen. On. And you might get them in with Come your on. crazy entertainment. Mm -hmm. But yeah. unless you keep the entertainment going, you ain't going to keep them. Amen. Right, because it's just like television to them. If they find something else more entertaining, they'll change the channel. That's right. Come on. Oh, amen. Come on. They'll find something else that entertains them a little bit more. Remember, Brother Rodney was talking yesterday or day before, I guess it was. We were talking about how that the organization that we used to fellowship with the most, and it came down, at least it was told to us, it came down from headquarters that preachers should only preach for 30 minutes. Because you can only keep that's that's as far as people's attention span would go. And you know, I got to thinking about that, Brother Rodney. That ain't exactly true. Yeah. It depends on what they're interested in. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. The number one show on television today, I suppose it was last time I checked the ratings or saw it in the headlines, is an hour drama. It stays on an hour. Hmm. To be number one, it must capture the attention of the audience for yeah. sixty minutes. Amen. Yeah. The number one sport going in America right now lasts three hours for one game. Yeah. yeah. Hour and a half for the first half, then it's half time. Yeah. Then hour and a half for the second half. That's right. Brother. People will say, how long was the baseball game last with Bill? Three hours? Yeah, long. Yeah, long. And it seems like sitting there watching the grass grow. Right. Amen? Yeah. Come on. But people are interested in that. Yeah. They ain't interested in God's word anymore. Right. Amen? That's why you can't keep their attention for no longer 15 or 20 minutes to get bored. Come on. Start fidgeting with their cell phone or start thinking about what they're going to eat for supper. Yeah, that's right. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not really that, you, that their attention span is only 30 minutes. It depends upon what it is they're watching, whatever it is they are got their attention in. Amen? Right. Think about that big movie, Titanic. We didn't go watch it. We don't go to the theater. Mm -hmm. Amen? But somebody said it like three hours long. Mm -hmm. Was it three hours long? And made millions of dollars, and people went and seen it over and over and over. Yeah. 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 Set through that thing all, oh, man, no time, many times. Some people wouldn't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. It caught their attention. Come on. The Word of God don't catch. And I know some of this goes on the back of preachers that are dead and cold as last year's bird's nest and don't have a fresh word to give nobody. So, yeah, I fell asleep a few times in some services myself. Amen? Right. So I realize that. But, honey, if you get somebody that's got the Word of God, amen? Yeah. And if they are preaching the truth and it is anointed, and your attention can't be kept, something's wrong, not with the preacher or the message you. All right. Amen? Very Hallelujah. Right. We're too busy thinking about something else. That's it. But we've been talking about the Word of uh -huh. God. Amen? Uh -huh. And this right here is real simple this morning. Yeah. Maybe the shortest of any of the messages that we preached. Matter of fact, I thought last week we were through 
at least with that subject, looking at it in that direction anyway, we're going to move on to something else. And maybe not move on to something else, but something along the same lines, but a little bit further down the road. Amen? All right. Until the Lord brought this scripture by me, and I've heard other people preach it, and they did a better job when they preached it than I'm going to do this morning. I guarantee you that. Right. We'll just get out of the way this morning that I'm not a great preacher. Amen? How about that? But I'm going to give it my best shot. Amen? So read with me this morning in the book of Luke, the fifth chapter and the first verse. Amen. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him yeah. to hear the word of God. Did you hear that? Yes. They pressed upon him, Brother Sleese. Uh -huh. They were following him. Yeah. They were after him. They were asking him, can you preach for us? Yeah. Amen. How many times has been anybody ever came to your house and said, listen, i got to have some word. Will you preach to me? Yeah. Amen? How many times have you ever went in a service thinking, man, I hope the preacher preaches for an hour today. I need some word. Amen? Yeah. I hope he gets wound up tired at 8 day clock. Yeah. I hope he preaches. Amen? I don't want it to stop. How many times have you ever been sitting there on your pew and the preacher's been going for 30, 40 minutes? And he says, all right, stand to your feet. How many times have you ever looked over there and seen somebody say, what? You're done? That's it? Well, I was I was liking this. Give me some more of it. Yeah. Brother Sleeze did that a time or two. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. But you, that's not something that you normally hear from people. That's right. They're usually like, my Lord, I didn't think he's ever going to shut up. Come on. Amen. Mm -hmm. On the way home, amen, before they have their dinner, they have the preacher for dinner. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think he's ever going to shut up. Yeah. I thought he was going to keep going on and going on and going on. Come on. So you don't hear it very often, but these people were hungry. For the word of God. That's right. And the Bible says they were pressing Jesus for the word. Yeah. And apparently, it was so much so that he had to find. He was. Let me find me a good place, mm -hmm. so that I can be. You know, where they can all see me, so they can all hear what I'm saying. Yeah. So he comes upon these old ship, these ships with these fishermen. Amen. Yeah. He saw two ships. Second verse. Come on. Standing by the lake. Yeah. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Mm -hmm. These are the more rough boys he picked to be his disciples. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. I don't mind. We would have picked these fellas. Amen. You'd have probably thought, my goodness, there's Simon. Filthy mouth. <laughs> rough guy. Amen. Yeah. Cussed like a sailor, he was a sailor. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Right. Interesting to note, though, the only time you find him cussing after he met Jesus was when he's trying to prove to him he didn't know him. Yeah. Put that in you. Chew on that a little while. Yeah. They saw two, he saw two ships by the lake. Come on. But the fishermen were gone out of them and they were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, yeah. and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. Now picture this. There's this multitude of people wanting to hear the word. So Jesus asked Simon, Simon, can we use your ship to do it? And of course he said, yeah. And they cast out a little bit from the land and he stood there, sat there one on the ship and taught the people that were there on the shore. Yeah. Amen. Well, He's teaching them the word of God. He's well, preaching to them the word of God. It says he taught the people out of the ship. Yeah. Now when he had left speaking, that means he closed. Amen. Right. He's not closing now. Finished up. And he said unto Simon, Oh, he's just getting started with Simon and his boys. Amen. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Did you know the works that he did were the works that the Father sent him to do and were to prove to the disciples, at least in the early goings, were to prove to the disciples that he was who he said he were. Amen. Yeah. And he tells Simon, he looks over and says, Launch out into the deep. Now remember, these guys have been fishing all night long. They're tired. Come on. Amen. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Yeah. For a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have told all the night. Yeah. And have caught so many fish, we did, we're tired of catching them. That ain't what it says, is it? <laughs> we have told all night and have taken nothing. But see, there ain't no period after that word nothing. Simon ain't through talking yet. Amen. If it was us, many times, you know what we would say? I'm just tired. Yeah. I've been doing this for too long already. Right. Even if God whispers to us, 
Which shrug it off must be me because I ain't seeing no results. Come on. So Jesus tells them to cast out. These are fishermen. Right. Jesus wasn't no fisherman. Not in their book. Amen. Come on. They were trained. This is what they did for a living. Right. It'd be like me going over there too, where Brother Sleece works across the road from us. Mm. Going there and trying to tell him how to do his job. I don't have no idea how to do his job. And he would probably think that. I mean, he'd probably think, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And some people would have thought that. And you would think maybe the enemy or maybe the flesh, Simon was flesh would whisper to him, what's he talking about? We've been fishing all night long. Have you ever been there before? Yeah. I have. I have told. I have worked. I have been up half the night all week long. And I show up on Sunday morning and two people come. Amen. All right. And the enemy says, look at this. You've been here for this many years. You've worked hard. You've done this. And you've tried to do what was, you thought was right. But now it's time to give up. Amen. You ain't seeing no results. See, man, we get our, our, we get our view of results twisted in life. Amen. All right. We think we ain't being successful unless we've got to build a bigger church, knock out a wall, get some more pews, add some more things because we our crowd gets bigger and bigger. Listen, there's some preachers out there today that's got the biggest crowds going and they're the biggest failures that's ever stood. Amen. Behind the pulpit. Because right. they ain't preaching the truth. Right. It ain't about getting the crowd in. Right. It ain't about me building me a big church on the street corner. Amen? Right. Oh, it's all about Jesus. Amen? And being obedient to His Word. So I've been there before. Amen. I know what it's like to toil, and it seems like you don't see any results. Amen? Right, right. But old Simon, see, he didn't stop there. We might have. We might have said, I've been there. I've done that. I ain't going to do it. I'm tired. I'm going to the house. Amen? Come on. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. That's why they want to know. That's why people ask you, they, they want to know how many people come into your church. Right. Because they want to gauge your success by the crowd you draw. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's, if that's a fact, Jesus was the biggest failure of all of them because when he got down to the end of his journey, one disciple yeah. stood at the cross. Yeah. One disciple right stood. There. Noah, big failure. He preached 120 years and the only people he got on the boat was his family. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, big fa These are some big failures. Amen. Yeah. Because they didn't have the crowd. Amen. So that's how we gauge them. Oh, that preacher's a big success. You should see his crowd. You ought to see how his church has grown since he took over. Amen. That don't have nothing to do with it. And Peter's fixing to find that out. Amen. Right. Peter's fixing to find that out. They won't know how much money you're bringing in. <laughs> They won't know how many people you got. Yeah. Peter says, Lord, we have told all night long mm. and have taken nothing. But thank God he didn't finish there. Amen. Right. He didn't lay down his net and say, we ain't took nothing. We've told all night long. I'll see you later. I'm going to house. Oh. Amen. What does he say next? Mm. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Mm. All right. Regardless of the fact that I've told all night and I haven't seen nothing. Regardless of the fact that I'm wore out. Regardless of the fact that it seems like all of the powers that be are against me. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will. Oh, we need some people today that get that in their crawl. Amen. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will. Lord, I know that in man's eyes it may not look like nothing, but nevertheless, at thy word, I will. Lord, I know my family may be against me and telling me to give up. And the enemy said, won't you just stay home? But nevertheless, Lord, at thy word, I'm going to the house of God and lifting up your name. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to turn back. I'm going to keep on pressing because nevertheless, at thy word, I am going to make it. I'm going to do what you called me to do regardless of whether I get any shakes of the head, hands and pats on the back and whether I get the plaudits of man. That's what I was looking for. That fancy way of saying it. Whether I get the plaudits of man or not, Nevertheless, at thy word. Yes. Nevertheless, at thy word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've told all night. I've worked. Yes. Those nights are long. Yes, sir. Amen. When you've worked That's and you, you seem like you don't see no result. Right. But nevertheless, yeah. at thy word. Come on. Whenever it seems like you're the biggest failure that ever stepped foot on planet Earth. Right. It seems like you were somebody posted on Facebook a day or two ago. They said, I wish I'd go back and just redo things. You know what I told them? Yeah. 
Uh, best leave it alone. If we could go back, we'd make a bigger mess All than we did the first time. Right. Amen. Come on. Just best leave it alone. Do like Paul. Forget those things that are behind. Reach forth to those things that are before. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Wish I could go back and do it all over now, honey. You'd have made a bigger mess probably. probably. Amen. We we make the same. How many people make the same mistakes over and over again? Amen. That's in our human nature. Right. Amen. You're supposed to be able to learn from your mistakes. That's right. And we do some of them, but some yeah. of them. It don't seem like we learn much. Amen. Same thing. Here I am, Lord. <laughs> again. Yeah. Amen. Done been here, done did that, but I'm back again. All Amen. Right. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. at thy word. Yeah. I know the enemy's telling me to give up, but nevertheless, Come on. at thy word. I know my family's turned their back on me, but nevertheless, yeah. at thy word. I know that it seems like I'm not seeing the harvest that I ought to see, but nevertheless. At thy word. Amen. Oh, Peter said we told all night long, Master. But nevertheless, at thy word. Amen. I got to think about that widow woman, that meal barrel, that barrel of oil, and that, that the cruise of oil, that meal barrel. Y'all going to get tired of hearing me talk about her. But she knew what it looked like. She knew what she had, and she knew what was going on. But she said, nevertheless, yeah. at thy word. Yeah. Amen. When Abraham took Isaac up the mountain yeah. to lay him down on the altar, he knew what was being asked of him, at least what it seemed like to the carnal mind. But he said, nevertheless, yeah. I don't understand it. Listen, you don't have to understand it all. As many times, Lord, I say, Lord, I don't understand it, but I trust your word. Amen. As he walked Isaac up the mountain, he said, nevertheless, at thy word. I don't like it. I don't understand it. But nevertheless, at thy word. I know you might have had a rough week at work. But nevertheless, God, at thy word, I will be in church Sunday morning lifting up your name. I will not forsake you. Come on, brother. Nevertheless, at thy word. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. I got to think about that Shunammite woman. Came around to Elijah. We talked about her. Amen. People no doubt told her, why are you going to get that prophet for? Your son's dead. Yeah. But instead of accepting that, she said, nevertheless, yeah. at thy word. Yeah. Nevertheless, at thy word. Mm -hmm. God, see, God's word, I've told you this a million times the last month. Mm -hmm. I'll tell it to you again this morning. God's word is sure. Yes, sir. It is steadfast. Right. It is immovable. Right. It cannot be changed. That's right. God will stop storms to see His Word come to pass. That's it. Amen. Come on. When, they, when the disciples, Jesus said, let us go over to the other side, Brother Bill preached on this not long ago. Let us go over to the other side. And they got out in the middle of the lake there and, and a big storm came. Yeah. But see, the storm couldn't stop His Word. Come on, brother. They said, Master, careth not thou that we perish? Amen. Come on. Can't you see that we're about to die? Yeah. <laughs> He stepped out on the bow of the boat and said, Peace, be still. Because God will stop storms to make Him move heaven and earth. That's it, brother. For His Word to come to pass. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word will remain forever. Amen. He'll move a sea. That's right. Yeah. The Red Sea. That's right. For His Word to come to pass. So I realize that you may see some situations and circumstances in your life that look Impossible. Yeah. They look impassable. It doesn't look like you can get around them. It doesn't look like you can get over them. That's right. But nevertheless, at His Word. Praise God. Oh my goodness! You know how many times I've had to sink my teeth into the promise: "All things work together for good to them that love God, the called according to His purpose." Come on. I know y'all think this, but everything always went rosy in my life. <laughs> I've stood on His Word. All right. I'll keep standing on His Word. Yes. And as long as I stand on His Word, yes. Amen. I will make it. Yes. Sir. Because His Word is sure. Yes. I know, Lord, it don't look good, but nevertheless, mm -hmm. at Thy Word we will go on. Yes. I know, Lord, the situation <laughs> looks hopeless. <laughs> But nevertheless, at thy, somebody help me say, nevertheless, nevertheless. At, thy at thy word. Oh, hallelujah. Nevertheless, nevertheless. At, thy at thy word. I wish we could get that inside of us today. And then no matter the storm, no matter the mountain, no matter the devastation, no matter what's in front of us, behind us, and on either side, we'll stand in the midst of the battle and say,
say, Lord, I know this don't look good. But nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to be victorious. I'm going to go through holding your nail scarred hands. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish somebody help me preach this morning. I ain't going to give up. I know the enemy said quit. I know my flesh says quit. But nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on preaching. I'm going to keep on singing. I'm going to keep on working till you come. come on. Amen. Nevertheless, Glory. at thy word. Yes. I know it don't seem like my prayers come on. are doing any good for my family. The more I pray for them, the worse they seem they get. Yeah. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. at thy word. Mm -hmm. You promised me my house, Lord. Yes. You promised me the salvation of my family. Come on. I know it seems like the harder I pray, the drunker they get. Yeah. But nevertheless, Praise at thy word, God. Brother Slee, all this winds Praise me up. God. Nevertheless, yeah. at thy word, yeah, come on. I will follow you. Come on. I will stand. You remember that old song? Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Amen. I don't know all of it, but I like to sing. Amen. Yeah. Standing on the promises of God. You can bank on His Word today. Right. Amen. Come on. You can stand on yeah. His Word. Come on. Amen. You might come down here. I don't know how far down in the future. We might be here until the Lord comes. But if you come down here and voice the Lord Tabernacle, ain't here no more. Yeah. God's Word still will be. Amen. When you stand at my casket. Right. Amen. And talk about how good I look dead. Or I don't look myself. Or maybe you think I look better dead than I did alive. <laughs> Amen. God's Word will still remain. That's it, brother. Amen. He'll be raising somebody else up to preach it. Because I won't be here to preach to you no more. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. I don't see no results. But nevertheless, at thy Word. I don't feel like it. Come on. But nevertheless, at thy Word. Yeah. I know my flesh thinks... But nevertheless, yeah. at thy word. I know my brothers and sisters say, but, but nevertheless, Come on. at thy word. I know the enemy mm. wants me to give up, but nevertheless, at thy word. Amen. Amen. True. My goodness. Not because I feel it. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Peter didn't feel like it. That's These boys have been working all night long. Yeah, really? Really? But he said, Lord, nevertheless, at thy word. I will. All right. See, he's choosing something here. Right. You got to choose to come to church. Mm -hmm. That's right. God ain't gonna put a stick of dynamite under your britches and blow you off the couch. Amen. Yeah. You got to choose to get up, get ready, and come to the house of God and worship Him. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. When I go and I feel like it, you gonna go to hell. That's right. Amen. You fix you fix it to bust hell wide open. You go by your feelings. All right. How many people in here today feel like going to hell? <laughs> Amen. Can't go by feelings. Nevertheless, right. at thy word. I don't feel like going I, I don't feel like going to church, Lord, but I know your word says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. Even the more so as you see the day approach. Amen. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, at thy word. Yeah. I know, Lord, I have to drive 20 miles to get there. Yeah. There's closer churches right here in my neighborhood. Right. Listen, I've been there. We drove to Sister Judy's every service for two years, two and a half years. Uh -huh. Something like that. And that wasn't just 17 miles to Oldsboro. It's on the other side of Oldsboro. Yeah. Amen? That's right. But nevertheless, at thy word. Amen. If you go on, listen, if you go on somewhere where you're getting fed, you better hang on to that as long as you can. That's Amen? Right. Amen? Come on. Because there will come a time when you ain't going to be able to find the word being preached That's like right. you're hearing it this morning. Come on. Amen. That's true. Amen. There's gonna. It ain't that easy to find anymore, anyway. Amen. Amen. That's right. We better count our many blessings that we still have a place come to come to right. and lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Right. We better, even if they ain't but a handful in the crowd the morning you go, don't let that discourage you. Amen. Get in there and get what God has for you. Amen. Take it outside the walls of the church. Share it with people. Come back in and get some more of it next time. Nevertheless, right, brother. At the, Lord, I know it don't seem like I'm doing much, but nevertheless, at thy word.
So Peter and the boys, they're all tired and everything. He says, Master, we've told all night long. We have taken nothing. But nevertheless, at thy word, I will. And you know what happens? He obeys Jesus. Yeah. They throw down the net. Been fishing all night long. Right. They throw down the net. And there's so many fish in there, they can't pull it back up. Come on. Simply because instead of going by the way he felt, right. instead of going by his carnal mind, yeah. he said, nevertheless, it don't matter what the circumstance will... Oh, I wish you'd get this and we could go to the house. Nevertheless, it don't matter what the circumstance looks like, I will obey your word. I know what your word says. And Sister Vonnie, you can count on his word. Amen. You may not be able to count on your family. You may not be able to count on your best friend. You may not be able to count on your preacher. But you can count upon God's word. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It will never change. You can count on God's word. You can count on God's word. Man will try and change it. But the original's already been written and ain't doing no good. Amen. Hallelujah. It's written. It is finished. It is written. Can you imagine... If when the devil came to Jesus out in the wilderness mm -hmm. and he tempted him, you know, and he said, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, it is written, but they're revising it next year, so check yeah. with me later. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. No, it's written. It don't need man's revision. That's right. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Amen? Come it on. is written. Why in the world would you want anything far away from the original? Amen? Why wouldn't you want the closest thing to the original that you can lay your hands on? on. Thank God we still, I'm surprised it ain't been done away with. Amen. I'm talking about the original as far as we can get a hold of it in our English language. I'm surprised that you're able to go to the bookstore and grab you a copy today. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. And even through persecution, even through fire, even through flood, it remains today. Think about that. From 1604 to 1611, the scholars of the King James Commission worked on this book. Right. That's been a lot of years ago. Amen. And even before that, <coughs> with Wycliffe and Tyndale's work, uh -huh. it has survived. Right. Amen. And I know that big name preachers will tell you it don't matter. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, well, why is the King James Version the end all of all translations. I said, because it's the closest thing we got. And any scholar worth his salt, even the editor of the NIV said, well, you know, the King James Version is the closest literal translation we have, but, no, I don't want you, but. Amen. I want the closest. If God says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of his mouth, I want you to keep your dirty feet out of my drinking water. Amen. And let me have the original, the closest thing that we've got to the original text. Amen. Nevertheless, at thy word. And in order to say that, we have to know what God's word says. Amen. Come on. You can't just grab any old book that comes down the pot and try to build your life on That's it. That's right, brother. What if they've changed it? Come on. What if it ain't that way? Amen. Amen. You're going around telling people you're going to have a room when you get there instead of a mansion. Come on. You're going around telling people that Mary wasn't a virgin, she's just a young woman. Yeah. Amen. You're going around missing out on a lot of things. Right. Amen. That are in the original. That's right. Better grab a hold of it. Better sink your teeth into it. Amen. And say, Lord, I know that it don't look good and it ain't popular. Yeah. But nevertheless, at thy word. And even though it made no sense to Peter, sometimes the Lord has us do things that our carnal mind says, hey, I don't even know why I'm doing this. That's right. Amen. Well, even though everything he had ever been taught come on. told him that it would do no good. Think about that. That's right. Fishermen. Tried every trick of the trade, I'm sure, that night. They wasn't just out there to be blowing, wasting time. Yeah. They were out there trying to make some money. Come on. So he tried everything, but all his efforts had failed. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Yet he did, Brother David, what the Lord commanded right. solely upon his word. word. Not because he saw any results, not because he felt anything, but simply because God said it. Amen. That's what he wants from us. That's right. That's what he wants from us. Simply because, nevertheless, Brother Rodney, simply because God said it, right. I will do it. Come on. Amen. My goodness. I'd give you some more, but I think that's enough. <laughs> nevertheless, yeah. at thy word, I will go forth. Yeah. I'll keep standing on the truth. 
I'll keep holding to your nail scarred hand. I'll keep claiming the promises. Yeah. Even though it don't look like the promise is going to be fulfilled. That's it. Amen. Come on. I realize we've been preached since I was knee high to a grasshopper and sleeping under the church pew that Jesus was coming. Right. And I know there are naysayers that say, well, he ain't coming. Yeah, but nevertheless. It's been a hundred years to it, yeah, but nevertheless, mm. at His Word, amen, yeah. God said it, He will perform that which He has said. His Word will do what He sends it forth to do. And nevertheless, at Thy Word, I will obey. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My goodness. I appreciate everybody that calls this their church home. But, if we get down to where it's nobody but me and the roach, the doors will stay open until he says otherwise. Because I didn't open. We didn't come down here and open this church because we thought, wow, we've got a big following. Wow. Amen? Come on. We did it at his word. Right. And until his word tells us different, Amen. they're stuck with us. That's Amen? Right. Amen? Come on. We ain't seen nothing to what God's going to do. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And nevertheless, at his word, and I just use that as an example because I'm a pastor, but the same goes with you. Uh -huh. Maybe you're preaching and you ain't seeing what the results you want. Yeah, but just keep on preaching. Amen. Maybe you're witnessing to people at work and you ain't seeing the results you want. Yeah, but just keep Amen. on witnessing. Amen. Maybe you're trying to be a light, but it seems like you ain't shining too bright. Yeah, but just keep on letting that little light shine. Amen. I thought about something Tuesday night. Brother Mike, my goodness, he preached about as good as I've heard him preach. He preached, I mean, it was powerful. It was good. Little as much when God is in it. You know what I got to thinking about? I got to thinking about how you can have, right now like this room is all lit up. Wow. And if I took out a match or a candle for the bill and I lit it up here, it wouldn't seem like much in mm -hmm. midst all these lights. And maybe that's the way you feel sometimes when you come into church. Or maybe when you're around other Christians. You're with other lights and it seems like your light don't shine too bright. Yeah. But if you take that same candle in a completely dark room and you light the candle then, it seems more significant than when it's in a room that's already lit up. That's it. You may seem like you're little and not much, but when you go forth outside into a dark and dying world that's full of darkness, right. your light stands out. Amen. How many times have you heard somebody tell a story about getting lost mm -hmm. and it was dark and they saw a light in the distance? Yeah. Maybe it's just a porch light. Yeah. Maybe it was a ship and it was just a lighthouse off on the horizon. They could barely see the light. That's where your light is. That's right. That's where your light is. Whenever you go out, I know you ain't getting it like I got it because it turned me upside down when I thought about that. Oh while, you're, one, while the one light is with all other lights, it doesn't seem that significant. Yeah. But when everything's dark and you only light that one light, then it is more significant than at any other time. When we had the power outage and it got dark, yeah. Honey, those candles seem like well, that, that really puts out a lot of light. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bring it in here this morning and light it with all this here going on. You'll think, well, that really ain't that bright. Yeah. But you stick it in a place of darkness and you let that light begin to shine. Yeah. It'll draw people's attention to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many times have you ever been sitting in a dark place and you see a light somewhere? What do you do? You stare. What? what is, you know, that's the, the. You stare at the light. Yeah. You look at the light. The light gets your attention. Same way with you. If you go outside those doors this week and let your light shine into that world that's dark and full of sin, they will begin to see that and begin to look and see what kind of, what is that? I see a light. I, 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 when you walk into a room where there ain't nobody saying, when you walk in there, your light walks in there with you and it's like there's a light that comes into a dark room and you're like, hey, wait a minute. Something's different in here. I see a little bit of illumination I didn't see before. There's a light that's walked in. That's you. All right. That's you. Amen. Amen. That's true. Nevertheless, at thy word, even though it seems like you ain't doing much, yeah. stand on God's word. Amen. The results, most of what we do for the Lord in this life, we will see the results when we get to the oh. other side. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. People being touched by your life that you have no idea that you touched them. Come on. But you'll know when you get there. Amen. Amen. So stand on His word. Trust in His word. Come on. Obey His word. And He will see you through. Nevertheless, at thy word. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody else this morning have something before we go?